selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to do we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify's there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify's the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash audioboom, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash audioboom now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash audioboom. And a lot of times you're not focused on anything unusual or anomalous happening. And all of a sudden you're confronted with experiences that don't fit in your paradigm. Hello, I'm Wendy. And I have been posting on a regular basis once a week. I've taken a break because there are so many things that have happened in my life. Some of them have to do with personal health issues, my mom needing a pacemaker, a uh, recent death in the family of close relative. So I stepped back from doing my regular podcast shows. However, this is one that I'm doing myself because of a recent encounter. Now, when I worked with the guides well, starting 25 some years ago, the first thing I said is I don't want to see dead people. And that was my absolutely don't want to see any dead people. And the response was a laugh, and they're not dead, they're energy. So they just kind of chuckled at my, um, I would say, ignorance. (laughs) Um, And I was supposed to get over it. So since then, I've had experiences and multiple experiences going into places that were haunted and being, I call it, dinged, tagged, uh, connected. And uh, there's usually a reason when that happens. Either it's somebody needing some help or somebody wanting to get your attention because there's something else going on that maybe would be interesting or informative if you pay attention to it. The most recent incident, we took a spontaneous trip to see my mom and decided to go out to eat. The thing I've also learned is there aren't any accidents, that there is an unseen agenda wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever's happening, to help you connect the dots. And we don't see those things, and we just assume, you know, synchronicity, coincidence, accident, happenstance. Well, the way this happened, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do a website because of the things that I experience. And I thought, accident? No, it really isn't an accident. Occasional? No, it's more than occasional. So I came up with incidental medium. And which is really funny because it's actually the word in that structure (laughs) refers to the experience. So we're trying to find a place to eat. And she suggests a couple places. One that was new and and, uh, is actually a a reopening of a restaurant that had been further out of town. And uh, really wonderful. We liked a specific food that they serve. And so that was that was the prompt for that. They were booked. So okay, on to the next one. The next one is booked. However, they say, you know, you might find a place at the bar, we'll be happy to serve you there if you can wait. So we go back and check out the bar. Nope, there's only two places and they're on opposite ends and there's three of us. So we check that out and then head on across the street to the other restaurant. Now, the backstory on that is this restaurant is in a building that had just, mom told us all about how it had just celebrated its 100-year anniversary. It started out as a hotel, and it's now a room for, when I looked it up, a room for mom, care for seniors. It's a it's on the historic registry, so it's a, it's a really cool building. At the bottom, those are restaurants, so we go into the restaurant. I'm having a conversation with my mom about something she recently... Um, a dental thing, I think, between the two of us. We both had dental issues. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. So beyond that, now we're going, we're just having a conversation. All of a sudden, I feel this poke in the back of my seat, like where my, if I had a purse, it might be hitting me or I'm bumping into it, but it isn't. I'm, I'm thinking, what the heck? You know, and it's real obvious. And I'm stopping what I'm doing. I'm looking around, trying to see. And Andy, who's sitting right beside me, is thinking, well, I'm looking at him. No, no, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the heck is, is bumping me, is poking me in the back. It's like the upper hip right there, you know, it's just like on the right hand side. And I'm thinking, what is this? And my mom is c confused, wondering why all of a sudden I'm making this big production out of the back of my chair. And I'm saying something poked me, <laughs> something. And I just, I had to make sure we're sitting in a corner and it's kind of a quiet corner. And so it shouldn't, there should be nothing there. So I know, all right, okay, this place is haunted. Well, that's my first thought anyway. This place is haunted. And it makes sense. It's in a building that, you know, is 100 years old. I'd been there maybe two or three times before and never had anything that I was aware of connect. So this time, all right, okay, ghosts. Then the surprising part, as I'm eating my sandwich, feeling this sudden numbing on the right side of my, the lower jaw, which I haven't had any dental work there done recently, okay? That, that, that's a new spot. And all of a sudden, I'm feeling this numbness like I've had a hit, a shot of Novocaine. And not only that, my tongue is also numb on the right lower jaw. So I'm eating my sandwich, and all of a sudden, I've got this dentist working on me. <laughs> so I have this really weird numbing sensation. And as we're leaving the restaurant, I'm thinking, okay, this is a dentist. This is obviously, I've been connected to a dentist and I don't understand what that's about. I do get a name and the name is John and my mom had just had a connection with an old friend that she worked with who they'd gone to one of the restaurants we actually tried to get into that was booked and that name, first name was right. The second part of it, Ro, Ra, you know, it just wasn't, I couldn't, I wasn't getting a strong connection with that last name. However, as we're in the car leaving, I think I've forgotten my phone. I don't see my phone. I'm not sure if I lost it, whatever. So we're trying to call my phone. The phone does not ring. What does activate is the car. The phone is connected to the car, but we don't hear the phone ring. So I'm trying to think, well, how could the phone ring if it's not in the car, but it's connected to the car? So that was a little bit confusing. And finally, the phone is under my seat. So it's in the car, under my seat, and making the car respond without actually ringing the phone. All sorts of weird stuff with that. The electronics, which is a typical way of knowing, yes, the ghosts are, or whatever, is connected to you because the electronics, electrical issue, is what I deal with with my nightlights. That's front and center. Okay, so that's a hint that this is definitely a paranormal connection. And find the phone. Okay, that's all right. So it's kind of, at that point, it's... <laughs> It's just entertaining. And what's this about? At night, I get, in the middle of the night, I get the last name. And so it is a conclusion of that raw RO name. So I have the name, wondering, okay, so is this a dentist? So I go online to find out if my thought is, this must be the name of the deceased dentist. But I can't, that's always a jumping to conclusions. So I have to step back and, okay, what is this name about? But I have two clues, dentist and the name. So I do a search. The dentist's name doesn't come up. So that doesn't come up with that name. What does come up is the name of the journalist, the writer who wrote the story about the dentist who was deceased. So the writer was the name that connected me to the name of the dentist who was trying to get my attention and all the backstory of how the dentist died. And in the meantime, though, the dentist, I find out, is someone my mom knew that was part of her community. So this was no stranger to her. And she remembered the death. She remembered all the, the details about that. And she'd actually connected with him at some of the various functions in her community. So he knew her. The funny thing is, and he told me, that the way we connected, the three of us, we went into the second restaurant, and when they told us to go check out the bar area, he was in that area, saw us, and then proceeded, since he knew my mom, and he had a sense that I was, he told me I was an abstract thinker, and I might be able to connect a few dots. 
<laughs> the Novocaine helped. <laughs> that was, I was like, oh, wow. Okay. So she knows him. And then there's this thing of, since I'm the abstract thinker, he's able to connect to me and give me some information. And the information includes the fact that um, it was important for him to make contact and he's still active. And I had just posted recently a blog about conscious dying, where there are some connections for people as they transition that their soul checks in and decides that, okay, we need to stay a little bit longer. The body is going to be here a little bit longer to make connections with all of our loved ones and all of the people who are significant others in our life to help ease the transition period. And so that's a, a um, on some level, a conscious decision from the soul. And there's also another way of checking out where they may go ahead into the non-physical. They're going to go into the non-physical because they are shown they can do more work there. So they don't need to linger because they can transition into the non-physical. So there are, there are decisions made at that level from the soul and the soul helpers, the guardians, the other companions in, in the non-corporeal, in non, non-physical form who are helping us through the transition. With that... The guidance is that there are some things that the dentist is able to do and has been doing since his departure, since his transition, to help people that he has been connected with, loved ones and friends and associates on that level. And so when I'm talking recently with Irma about her experience where she sees the deceased as actual physical forms and physical body, she sees them fully intact I don't have that same experience. I have seen shadow people. I've seen, you know, the, just an outline of a physical form or a brief glimpse or in a dream I'm given a vision of how this person might have appeared. But it isn't my normal experience to have the full physical presence of a being in front of me. That may change. Everything's always changing. With this, though, I'm given an imprint and I'm given information, audible information I'm hearing. And I always question my interpretation because I don't want to put words in the mouth of whoever I'm talking to. So I'm really careful about, okay, am I projecting this or am I receiving this? So I have to question when I'm getting information, is this something I'm trying to connect the dots or fill in the blanks? And it, it really does make a big difference. So until you're comfortable with knowing, okay, this isn't my, this isn't my normal language, these aren't my thoughts, this is foreign to me, this is unusual, this is a surprise, this is something that is completely unusual from my way of speaking, talking, thinking. The thing is they have to have a vocabulary of some kind. They have to have your encyclopedia to even be able to make a connection. But sometimes the disconnect comes when our encyclopedia is limited, when we don't have enough language, when we haven't educated ourselves enough to be aware of other ways of being, other philosophies, other lifestyles, other uh, companion spirits. And the more you learn, the more you expand your awareness, your horizons to be able to connect with other beings who may not have a similar vocabulary or way of expression that we are able to easily adjust to or adopt. And that's where somebody who sees aliens sees angels because their vocabulary, their reference book, their encyclopedia only allows for angels. Aliens aren't a part of that. So they automatically see angels. And this is not a judgment. This is just a way of saying we have reality boxes, like Ingo Swan says. We have these databases that we are constantly evolving, expanding, and increasing. And when we do that, that's why people are saying, well, how come back in the old days they used to reference this as a a flying ship? And so we see pictures of flying ships because they didn't have planes. So planes didn't exist. And at that point, they put a ship in the sky with wings, and that was the flying plane. And now when we have planes and we know some things do fly, we're seeing other types of ships, but they don't have wings and they aren't, they're orbs and they're triangles and they're still flying. And then we're learning that, well, in our day and age, we have the ability, the capability to create these kinds of vessels, but they weren't, when we started seeing them, 
they didn't exist. So there's, I mean, there's some reports from the 1800s of sightings of lights in the sky, and we're still having trouble <laughs> wrapping our minds around or, you know, what these things might be. So I just wanted to address this because when I experienced that poking at the top of my hip, uh, it was a shock. It was, a, it was such a surprise that I'm interrupting what I'm doing, having a conversation with my mom and my husband so blatantly that they're both looking at me like I must have been stung by a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> because because for me it was a it was a very dramatic encounter and it was over the top okay and then to top it off there's this wonderful unpleasant novocaine <laughs> in my lower jaw my left the right I'm sorry the right side of my mouth and then my the right side of my tongue and I'm like <laughs> I was just eating a sandwich. And at first I'm thinking, okay, is there something in the sandwich? Is there something, did I eat something? Did, did I, was there something there that, that I need to be concerned about? And then as it began to dawn on me, no, this is like a dental thing. This is like, and I hadn't had any dental work that would influence that. We had been talking, incidentally, about mom changing from her dentist where she is currently going because they're retiring to a dentist locally who would also fit this bill. So that was the conversation. And then this stuff happens. Now, as it's happening, I'm not connecting these dots. This is fluid. So this is happening as we are talking about this, and I'm getting dinged by somebody poking me in the back, and then feeling this Novocaine shot, and again, not knowing that's it, just slowly making these connections. And a lot of times, these things have happened just like that. You're living in the moment. You're not focused on anything unusual or anomalous happening. And all of a sudden you're confronted with experiences that don't fit in your paradigm. So it takes a little bit to get up to speed as to why this might be worth following up on, paying attention. How do you stop time to connect the dots? And as it happened, Everything was there. I was given a clue. I had the first name John. Turns out that name did not belong to the dentist. The cool thing was that the, the name, first name and last name, belonged to the reporter who wrote the story about how the dentist died. Now, the other parts of that, that my mom could corroborate the name and the whole nine yards about the dentist because she knew the dentist and so that was really, really helpful. It doesn't always happen. You can connect the dots this easily. And so then I went on Google and anything I could find to see background for the news stories, the information about the dentist, the information about lifestyle history, timing, why this would be relevant, and some information I was able to give my mom also was corroborated by the backstory. I didn't know anything about any of this until after I got the prod and the Novocaine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm highlighting that because that was really, really a big deal. And uh, there's no way you could miss it. A quick break. Selling a little or a lot. <laughs> Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to do we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify's there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash audioboom, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash audioboom now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash audioboom. 
For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Continuing, I was feeling really amplified. And I was even saying, my, I, you know, I'm just wired, wired for sound. And then after talking to the dentist, which is very similar to channeling, you're getting kind of a download. You're going back and forth with why is this important? Why are we talking? What do you need help with? Why are you here? And some of it was that he was just thrilled that somebody was actually able to connect and able to hear him and uh, know that he was there and make and it was he was trying so hard to give me information and they don't have at least in my experience we are not able to have a linear one-on-one -on -one connection with them they're in a different dimension and so it's like you know trying to put a pin the tail on a donkey <laughs> You know, playing that game, on the donkey's on the wall, you've got the tail, and you're trying to find it, and you're blindfolded. Okay, well, they're trying to figure out where the, is going to be the best opening, what kind of information am I going to be receptive to, and will I be able to get the right link and make the connection? And if I had assumed that John was his name, I would have been dead wrong. Okay, that was a, a Freudian. Uh, <laughs> I, I would have been incorrect because that wasn't his name. The cool thing was that it, when it registered as the reporter's name and the dentist was part of the story. So that helped me be able to make that leap of, oh, here, here is where it is relevant. Why did he do that? Because his name wouldn't have been as easy for me to connect. But the reporter's storyline and his, his information gave me a complete synopsis that I was looking for that told me about this whole scenario and why he might be present. He was a social person, so he's still social. <laughs> he's still hanging out at some of those same places, which I thought was fascinating. Um, there's more to that story, and I'll blog it. I'll put it on the blog. And again, I've started this new website, Incidental Medium. Okay, so here's the connect. Incidental Medium. He gave me a tweak. <laughs> I inspired. Okay, it's not an accident. It isn't occasional. It's more than occasional. It's incidental. It happens along the way. And that's something that I've been fighting for decades. All right. The, because going back to that very first thing, I don't want to see dead people. Please don't. Uh -uh, no way. They show up anyway. And sometimes it's been, it, it's like a, a, a line of people outside the door or inside the room, depending on what's going on. And the, the thing I never wanted to do was get too caught up in that realm and ignore the things that were happening currently in my life. I just wanted to have more experience to be able to tell the difference between whether it was necessary uh, to talk to somebody and would it be helpful. Because as I have encountered more of the deceased, there are some places they hang out and they, they, they're just there. They're part of the scenery and they're not going anywhere. They're happy where they are. They, they are in a different, like I said, a different dimension. And so for them, they've surrounded themselves with comfortable things and comfortable experiences. And there's, there's nothing in their world that they want to change at this time. And there are others who are stuck and they do want to move on. And they are desperate to make a connection and say, get me out of here, help. <laughs> I'm done. I want to go forward. But they've, they've lost the key to the door. And they've, they're stuck in a mind field that doesn't uh, give them a way out. And so the way I describe it, it's like an energetic boost that a medium or somebody who is an intuitive, somebody who is sensitive, a medium can give them a boost to help send them through the door. That's basically all that's required is to say, okay, or to ask someone on their wavelength, someone in their vibration, their frequency to come and get them, which happens as well. The language we use for this has changed. And what I have discovered is that each of us who are able to tune into this kind of awareness, this reality, has our own way of adapting and making it 
normalizing it, okay? Uh, and not everyone's comfortable with that because they don't see it, they don't feel it, they don't believe it, they don't buy into it, they don't want to know about it, and it's boring and it's scary. It's inconvenient, and I've learned to deal with that too. So it isn't for everyone. It's just that this is the way I have learned to adapt and learn to integrate my own reality with the others that I sometimes run into, sense, and encounter in a way that I can articulate, give it language, communicate how it might be possible for this to happen. And it's also been extremely helpful for me to connect with other psychics, other intuitives, others who, who aren't necessarily um, out there trying to market their abilities, their skills, and teach everybody, okay, this is a class and this is how you do it. I, I've never been drawn to that. I've been drawn to people who are actually boots on the ground and trying to help others without making a big deal about it. Because they're the ones doing a lot of work, and they don't really expect any kind of credit. They just get the job done. So those are the people I've gravitated to. Again, Irma Slage is somebody that I was really happy to see because with her, her work, she's able to show, demonstrate the presence of orbs. And the first thing I saw was a presentation, of, and this was years ago, um, a presentation with a local TV crew following her, and she pointed out the area where the presence was that she felt and said, yeah, it's right over there. And then camera, they went back, and the film crew showed the recording, and that's exactly where the orb was. So those kinds of things, it's nice to have some kind of validation and some kind of proof of, of what you're trying to do. Other times, you don't have any validation. It either makes sense to the person you're trying to give the information to, or it doesn't. And I've had the experience where sometimes it will not relate at that moment because the person isn't ready to hear it, or it goes against their own mindset, their frame of reference, their belief system. And the easiest thing with that is just to give the information and walk on. There was one time when I had a specific name that I never, ever used. It was an unusual name, or at least in my experience. I didn't know anybody by that name. And so when I got the name and we're at a gathering and these people are all around and I'm think thinking I'm a little bit insecure because it's you know a group situation and when you're wrong, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah, oh. um, you're going to you're going to be wrong. That's just the way sometimes you, you it's a hit and miss. Well, this was a hit, except the person it was a hit for did not want to hear it and was not wanting at any way, any time, any. Uh -uh, this is not what I, that this name doesn't re resonate. That is, that name does not exist. So after a couple of times having the person say, no, this name doesn't apply to me the third time because my guides kept saying, spirit kept saying, say this name again. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going down with a shift. This is just, I, I will do this. But the other thing about that is when you trust that information you're getting, you get more. The more you're willing to walk that line, talk the talk, and show them, yes, this is what I'm hearing, then they can give you more information because you're resonating, you're vibrating, you're in sync, you've got the frequency. And so that name one more time, third time. And she finally said, and this is the best of my recollection because the words right now, it had something more to do with that's never, that's not the name we called her. We never called her that name. That was her given name. That's what her family called her. And that was not the name we used. She was so upset, but that was a name I was given. The reason I was given that name is because she would identify with it. It wasn't an almost, a sounds like, could be, it was the name, the name on her birth certificate. Okay, so there, that was a hit. But for the person who was getting the information in front of that crowd, it was a miss until I continued and decided, I, I just have to give the name. I have to try it one more time. And at that point, when that happened, I was flooded. I felt this wonderful surge and all I can call it is pink light, like a glow, but it just, it, it envelops you and it comes through you. And it was a, a thank you, a way of saying, yes, thank you. And that, and it connected. And she was, then she was able to release a lot of stuff knowing that, yeah, yeah, this, the, her person, her loved one, her significant other was still there. 
still present and still trying to connect and say, you're going to be okay. I'm okay. You're okay. So the, the energy in that space changed at that time. And then the people who were looking at me like I was just really cruel and rude and mean and wrong lightened up. <laughs> But that's the other thing, too, is that, you know, as you're doing this as a medium, an intuitive, uh, a channel, whatever, however it works, you're trying to figure out a way to deliver information that's relevant and, it, and is pertinent to whoever is there. And the room doesn't make a difference, okay, because it's for one specific individual, usually. And your job is to make that connection for that individual. If you can do that, that's it. You're done. One and done. So that's another thing that as a as an intuitive, you have to forget about the crowd, forget about in, impressing people and, in, in, you know, for show. It doesn't make any difference. If you if you can get a message to one person from their significant other, then you have done your job. So that was what this was about. It was making information known, getting a connect and knowing from my mom that this person was a real person and they did have a track record and they did know each other and they did connect when he was living. And he was a very impressive individual. And so the thing that he had to do, though, was get my attention in a way that I could connect dots. And so the first thing, by poking me, <laughs> letting me know that he still had a whole lot of charge that he could affect my physical being, my physical form in such a way that made me do a double take and turn around in my seat and try and see what came through the wall. <laughs> um, that was first. And then the second was the clue that he was a dentist. And that was the Novocaine, that, that feeling of numbness. And uh, my husband said, well, what he did, it was an electrical, he, he hit that nerve with an electric pulse electric charge that was able to give me that that feeling now w w right or wrong one way or the other it was definitely a sensation that felt like I was in a dentist chair and gave me a, a huge clue okay this this is definitely um, on purpose intentional then the other instance was in the car when I thought I had forgotten my phone. I couldn't imagine because I carried it with a lip gloss, and so I had the two together. The lip gloss was in the car, but where was the phone? Somehow it was under my seat, and I it either fell off the seat something, some way it fell under the seat where I, I couldn't see it. And we'd only been in the car for, you know, like a, a few minutes. So anyway, then seeing it register in the car on the dashboard, the, the phone is ringing, but there's no noise. And the phone was on, so it should have made a noise. So little little things like that, trying to say, you know, this is an unusual presence, an anomaly. And I've had the electric, the system of the car has been impacted before. We had went to the Stanley Hotel, and out of the hotel, the windows were acting funky, not going up and down, and uh, the electronics is, was affected. We went to a um, in Boulder, just outside Boulder, an antique store, and got out of the vehicle. And the person I was with was, was skeptical and really was not real comfortable with this kind of thing happening and thought, it well, it's just a vehicle that's not a ghost. And this is what happens when you get a hitchhiker, okay? So the hitchhiker had affected the windows. And then when we get to the antique store, we go in and the car, the horn goes off. <laughs> and it's like, ee, 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 outside. The, and he couldn't get it to turn off <laughs> for a while. Finally, he figures out how to get it to turn off. And still, something that's not a ghost, no. But that's the hitchhiker effect. And that was just a little, you don't have to believe. It still happens. Not a problem. Don't believe it. Deny it all you want, and they don't go away. So, so a lot of this, for us, is a way of, for people who are on the fence and not real sure about what they believe, giving them a little prod, a little exposure, a little encounter to say, hmm, maybe, maybe. And that's exactly what was going on with that. Okay, maybe. I'm not comfortable with it, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's what's going on because nothing else made sense. It was an anomaly. It shouldn't have happened. There was no way to trigger it. It was just happening. I'll post, uh, once I get my words uh, to to, to get this out in a linear fashion where it sounds relatable and coherent, 
because I'm still I'm still going over it. This just happened last last week, and so I'm still trying to reconcile it, and and um, just astounded because of so many of the links that just automatically happened fell into place, and the synchronicity of it happening right after my connection with Irma Slage and talking with her about how she sees physical people. And talking about the conscious death, how some people stick around afterwards to help us, and then having several encounters, several conversations, several um, websites connecting with that information, showing me, yes, you know, they're still here and they're still helping. And then, you know, one front and center who is doing exactly what we talked about. Not only that, Andy's father also is, as he transitioned, he stayed longer in his physical form because he had things he needed to do. And he did those things. And he was activating our lights when I was dealing with some of this and saying, and actually dealing with, with Irma and um, messing up our interview, leaving it at 26 minutes when it was an hour. I had edited an hour. And I came back, and it only saved 26 minutes. The whole thing was still there in another form. But only 26 minutes had been edited. And where it stopped was our conversation about conscious dying and I don't believe I called it at that point I believe I described it but that was what I was alluding to was conscious the conscious death process when the soul and the spirit are all together working out the transition of what would be best for all of those involved so this is how it works for me each and every one of us has to figure out how it works for us I share because I would like to let you know that there is more to life than what we see. And some of these experiences take years to reconcile, to come to terms with, to give words to, to sink and integrate. And so just because it doesn't make sense today or next week, next month, next year, maybe 10 years down the road, everything will all come together in like the aha moment of, wow, that's why this happened, because I needed to grow into it. And for me, I definitely needed to grow into it because it was overwhelming at the beginning to try and connect everything and to see how it related. Where now I can see the links. I can see we went to three restaurants. The first one was full. And she, my mom was like, well, gosh, it wasn't full the other night. Well, okay, I'm making sense of it. It's Friday night. That's the deal. She says, no, it's, this isn't normal. <laughs> and the second restaurant, they had just had five people, in addition to some others, who showed up right before we walked in the door. And all of a sudden, that space was full. And then we were told, go back to the bar and check it out. Maybe you can sit there and order your food. When we went back to the bar, that's where we picked up the tag. That ghost was there seeing us, knowing that my mom was a former associate, following us across the street to the other restaurant, and then making a connection to me to give some information to my mom who would make it all of a sudden come full circle. Oh, wow, this is a, a real person, and this is the account. This is what happened, and this is who she knew him as. So all of the dots and the information that I got were relatable and were corroborated, and that was amazing and such a nice, nice parallel to the things that we had been talking about in previous shows. Now, I do have more shows booked, so it's not just me from now on. It's just me occasionally, incidentally. <laughs> so I'm going to work on this website. I'm not making any promises about how quickly I will add things to it, but I wanted to at least have the option of telling some of my stories and relating them as the incidental medium. Incidentalmedium.com. I appreciate your time. I hope you find something of value with this. And if you know a friend who's going through these kinds of experiencing, these kinds of incidents, these kinds of experiences, understand some of it doesn't make sense right off the bat. But if you give it a little time and just step back from it and wait, the dots will connect. And it's amazing when they do. Thank you for listening. Selling a little or a lot. Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. 
From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to do we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify's there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash audioboom, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash audioboom now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash audioboom. Purchase new wiper blades from O'Reilly Auto Parts today and we'll install them for free. See better and drive safer with O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, oh, oh. 